Hey everyone, my name is Sherman, a CPA here at Life Accounting, where we help you save on taxes and increase your wealth. Today, I'm going to help you do this by giving you the top tax avoidance strategies for individuals. The fastest way to put money in your pockets is to reduce your taxes. The returns from saving money on your tax bill will give you an immediate return on your investment. And the tax strategies that I am going to give you in today's episode can be implemented by literally anyone. You don't have to earn a certain amount of money. You don't have to own a business. You don't have to earn real estate and so on. So with that said, if you are ready to avoid paying taxes, go ahead and help me get started here by giving this video a thumbs up below. All right, so let's say it's tax time. And let's say that you and your spouse earns $100,000 per year in income. Well, in that case, you would be in the 22% tax bracket. But let's say you want to avoid paying as much taxes on this income as possible, which by the way, is completely legal as long as you are following the tax code. The tax code was written in a way for taxpayers to take advantage of all the tax benefits inside of it. And it is completely legal for you to do this as long as you are not lying or cheating on your tax returns or just failing to pay or file your taxes altogether. That would be tax evasion. If you need help understanding the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion, then be sure to subscribe and watch my last video on this topic. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and continue with our scenario here and walk you through how anyone can avoid paying taxes. All right, tax avoidance strategy number one, take the maximum deduction. The first logical step to lowering your taxable income is to take the maximum amount of deductions that are available to you. Now, when you file as an individual, you can take advantage of the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. You can only take one of these type of deductions, so you will want to choose the deduction that lowers your taxable income the most. Now, the standard deduction allows you to instantly lower your taxable income by $12,550 if you're single, or $25,100 if you are married. So immediately, if you and your spouse earns $100,000 per year, you would only pay taxes on the remaining $74,900 as a standard deduction. But you may take the itemized deduction if the amount exceeds your standard deduction. Now the itemized deduction allows you to write off the aggregate amount of specific expenses you incurred during the tax period you're filing for. This includes your medical and dental expenses, any state and local taxes you have paid, including property taxes on any real estate that you own. It includes your home mortgage interests, any gifts you've provided to charity, and any casualty or theft losses. If the amounts paid by you for these categories exceeds your standard deduction amount, then you should likely take the itemized deduction on your tax return. But no one is going to do this for you. You will need to tally up all of your expenses in these areas to determine which one of these deductions will save you the most money in taxes. All right, tax avoidance strategy number two, invest for long-term capital gains and not short-term. The second way that you can avoid taxes as an individual is by investing for long-term capital gains. Now, if you are a day trader, you're not going to love this, but investing for the long term can save you some serious money in taxes. And it is because long term capital gains are taxed at a much lower rate than short term capital gains. By the way, if you are wondering what a capital gain is, it is what happens when you buy an asset, that asset increases in value, and then you later sell it. In that scenario, you would pay taxes on the difference between what you paid to buy the asset, known as your cost basis, and what you sold the asset for. This applies to assets like stocks, real estate, and other types of assets. Now, for the transaction to qualify as a long-term capital gain, all you have to do is hold the asset for a year or more before you sell it. If you hold it for over a year before you sell it, you will pay less taxes than you would if you held the investment for 11 months. For example, here are the long-term capital gains tax rates as of 2020. If you are single and earn less than $40,000 per year in total income, then you will pay zero taxes on your capital gains. The same would apply if you're married but earn less than $80,000 per year together. 
And if you do earn above that range, you would only pay 15% in capital gains tax on the transaction, as long as your total income is less than $496,000. Whereas on the flip side, short-term capital gains are taxed just like your ordinary income, which can go upwards as high as 40% depending on your tax bracket, or 22% in our scenario of the married couple that earns $100,000 per year. By simply holding your investments for a little bit longer, you can pay much less in taxes. In fact, this is how the wealthiest people save on taxes. By primarily relying on tax-friendly income, like capital gains, instead of ordinary income. Tax avoidance strategy number three, invest into a 401k or IRA plan. The third way to avoid taxes as an individual is to invest your money into a 401k or IRA. If you're new to this, just know that these are simply retirement accounts that you can use to invest into things like stocks or real estate. They are the exact same thing, except a 401k is typically provided by a company who may also contribute to your retirement account, while an IRA is an account that you can set up on your own. Now, here's how these type of accounts can help you avoid taxes. Every dollar you invest into a traditional 401k or IRA can be deducted from your income. And remember, your tax is based on your income. So by taking this deduction and lowering your income, you are effectively paying less in taxes or receiving more money back on your tax refund. But not only that, you may also lower your income to the point to where you are in a lower tax bracket, which will give you even more tax savings. Now, the IRS does limit the amount that you are allowed to contribute to these types of accounts. For instance, if you are investing into a traditional IRA or 401k, you can only contribute up to $6,000 per year or $7,000 if you are above the age of 50. Now, it is important that you know that there are different types of these accounts that you can set up with different rules and tax benefits. There's the Roth IRA, there's SEP IRAs, there's solo 401ks, and so much more. But the good news is that we have videos on each of these types of accounts on our channel right now, so make sure that you're subscribed and make sure that you check them out. But ultimately, as an individual, the idea is that you can reduce your tax expense while increasing your wealth by investing into these tax-deferred accounts. Tax avoidance strategy number four, invest into an HSA plan. The next strategy to avoid taxes as an individual is to invest into an HSA plan, which is a health savings account. A health savings account is literally what it sounds like, a savings account for future health-related expenses. And 99% of people will have health-related expenses at some point in their life, so these accounts can be very useful. But even more useful is its ability to help you avoid taxes. The money you contribute to your HSA is tax deductible, meaning the money that you put into that account will actually lower your taxable income, which ultimately lowers the amount of taxes you pay at the end of the year. Now, just like IRAs, there are contribution limits. In 2021, the maximum amount an individual can contribute is $3,600 for self-only coverage or up to $7,200 for family coverage. But when paired with the tax savings of an IRA, these additional tax savings can be highly beneficial. In addition, the money inside of these accounts can also be invested into assets like stocks, bonds, or real estate, for example. Now, Karan has a separate video on our channel that goes into greater detail about HSAs, so be sure to subscribe and check it out if you are interested in it. Tax avoidance strategy number five, invest into a 529 plan. This is another type of investment account that can lower your taxes, but it works a little bit differently than the last two, so make sure you pay attention here. A 529 plan is an investment account that offers tax benefits when used to pay for qualified education expenses. Most people set up 529 accounts to put money aside for their child's education, while that money appreciates and compounds over the years into a much greater amount. Now, unlike the other tax-deferred accounts we've discussed so far, your contributions to a 529 plan is not tax deductible, at least not on a federal level. But over 30 states in the US allow you to deduct it from your state taxes, however. Instead though, the money you contribute into a 529 plan grows tax-free. And not only does it grow tax-free, 
but it is also not taxed when you take the money out of the account to pay for qualified education expenses. Most people pay for expenses with after tax dollars, but you will be paying with before tax dollars, which may be equivalent to a 30% discount on your education expenses. Like imagine paying $14,000 for tuition instead of $20,000. That's a huge difference, right? But not only do you have this benefit, you also benefit from compound interest. For example, if you put just $3,000 into a 529 plan today and did nothing else, it will be worth over $16,000 in 18 years at a 10% interest rate. So instead of paying $14,000, you really only paid $3,000 of your hard earned money because the rest grew tax free in your investment account. So take advantage of these five very powerful ways to avoid taxes. And like I said earlier, literally anyone can take advantage of these tax avoidance strategies.